Thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is Jennifer, and this is my executive assistant, Chidi. <laughs> right, he's gonna leave now. Okay, let's get into it. So, hello and welcome to my channel. Um, it's a brand new channel. This is my first, not really a tutorial. I guess it's a bit of information about um, my business and fiber art and things like that. Um, the point of this channel is to create a lot more of them. I really want to get out some tutorials, um, sort of on learning knots, um, tension, intermediate knots, and a few other things as well. Alright, if you followed me on Instagram, then you are going to recognize these boys. This is Chidi, he always photo bombs my photo shoots. Um, I have two other cats and a dog as well, so. I'm sure at some stage you'll meet them all. Um, so today I guess I just wanted to go through a few pros and cons of macrame. I wanted to go through suppliers, you know, rope, dowel, um, the stands that you use, all of that kind of thing, the planning, the costing, and just a few tips and tricks and things like that as well. There, it's basically everything I wished I had known before I started macrame, which is why I wanted to do this video first. I wanted to do this before getting into knots and things like that. For people who are just thinking about it or considering it, um, this is for you. So hopefully you find it interesting. Before we get into things, I probably should introduce myself as well. Some of you may not have followed my page or have followed my page for very long. Um, so my name is Jennifer Batchelor. I'm obviously the person behind Batch Design Studios. Uh, I'm 27, I live on the Gold Coast in Australia, and I am a crazy cat lady, obviously. Um, outside of macrame, because this is not what I do as a full-time job by any means, um, my full-time job, I have been a vet nurse for the past decade. So I work for eight years um, full-time in practice, uh, primarily as a surgical nurse and a hospital nurse. Um, and then about three years ago, I, um, yeah, just on the, anyway, um, I moved into a um, larger veterinary pharmaceutical company and moved more into sales and marketing. And then that position sort of evolved more into graphic design. So primarily now I do graphic design, um, do some photography, video editing, planning conferences, events, seminars. Yeah, a whole bunch of stuff um, and sort of assisting with like clinical trials and yeah, it's a hard role to explain. Anyway, so vet nurse outside of this. Um, I'm also a personal trainer. So <laughs> most days I leave home at 5.36 in the morning and I don't get home till 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. Um, that's sort of a standard day for me. So everything I do for my design studio is weekends, um, which is why sometimes my designs are few and far between. Um, I might disappear for like months at a time because I'm busy. <laughs> so, oops. yeah, so life and work and hobbies keep me very busy. But macrame, I took macrame up because I wanted something to do at home. So my partner is a graphic designer and um, again, he has a full-time job, but then does a lot of freelance. And, you know, I wanted something that I could do at home that wasn't taking me away from home. You know, a full-time job, is away from home, PT is away from home, I train at gym a lot, so that's away from home. Everything I did was just like, I never felt like I was home. Um, so I wanted something that I could do on weekends that would keep me here, keep me entertained, and um, give me something to do. So that's when I took up macrame. Um, it started as like just a bit of a hobby and things like that, and then obviously I got a little bit obsessed with it. Um, I do have a bit of an obsessive personality, so when I do something, it's like all or nothing. Um, so I was spending hours. I was waking up at like 4 a.m. in the morning to work on designs. I wasn't going to bed till midnight. Um, so I practiced a lot. Like people always ask how long did it take me to learn macrame? And I would say I probably produced like some decent stuff about six months in, but I was working like hours and hours every day, like practicing. And um, yeah, it took a lot of time. To, mostly to learn tension. So um, it's not something that I would say you can learn quickly. Maybe you can, maybe you can do it faster. Um, but yeah, just sort of see, I thought my first designs were great. Now I look back and I'm like, oh God, 
what was I thinking? But that's how I uh, got into macrame to start with and obviously because I was obsessive I started producing more and more designs and thought I could sort of sell them. I guess that leads me to my next topic. So yeah, um, I, I get asked all the time, you know, is it good for making money? Do I make a lot of money out of it? Um, or, you know, people comment and say, oh, your design's beautiful, you know, you must make lots of money. No, I wish. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, I've sold quite a lot of pieces and they are expensive, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into them. The materials are expensive. But I can easily say I've put 10 times as much into my business as what I've got back out of it. Um, so have I made any money yet from this? No. No, and I don't think I will for years to come, considering the amount of money I've put into it. But I've tried different things as well. So I got into it for macrame, and then I tried um, weaving, and then I've now gotten into like, fluid art and resin and alcohol inks and stuff like that. So I put, yeah, maybe if I just stuck to macrame, it would have been a lot easier, and I wouldn't have spent so much. So that's probably <laughs> a smarter option if you want to make money out of it. But I like to try new things. I get bored easily. So I love macrame, always will, but I really love playing with resin lately and um, that's a lot of fun. So maybe I'll do some tutorials on that as well. Okay, all right. Um, so getting into it, I guess the upsides and downsides um, of macrame. So oh, I, as I've already sort of said, it can get expensive. So um, I've had people ask me about this or tell me that that's what they're going to do and I don't want to discourage anyone from making their own things but let me just say if you see a design for $300 and it's like this big beautiful piece um, that an artist has made it is very unlikely that you are going to be able to make that same piece for cheaper if it's the same quality. Because a lot of people will see a design like, oh, that's really beautiful, but you know, it's $400 and I don't want to spend that, that's too much money. You'll probably end up spending at least two or $300 on it, um, creating it. And then if you aren't experienced in the knots, it just won't look as good. It just won't. It's that simple. Um, and if you were to put the effort in to learn the knots and be able to do that kind of work, then you're going to use a whole lot more rope and you're going to end up spending more than $400 on that rope to get to the point of making that big beautiful piece. So if you are looking for a one-off piece of macrame, just buy one from an artist, honestly. It's much easier <laughs> and it's beautiful. And let me tell you, it doesn't matter where you buy it from. That artist has put hours and hours and hours of work into it. Like some of my designs have taken three weeks to create and I haven't even done really big pieces you know there are uh, artists out there who just blow my mind with the amount of time um, that they put into it so I can guarantee you that it is worth your money trust me they know what they're doing the designs are beautiful the quality will be good if you want a one-off piece probably don't try and create it yourself um, if you are wanting to create something yourself, you know, for yourself or for your friends and family and it's something you want to continue and you think it's a fun hobby, then absolutely do it. It's so good. I can't tell you how many people I've gifted macrame to. Like, if you're my friend or my family, you're getting macrame. And it's nice, you know, they love it. You can design a piece that's specifically for them. It's not just like, oh, I'm just going to give them some rope. No, you design a piece for their house. It's heartfelt, something you've created and they are always so happy. Like, they're so happy and so thankful that you've created something for them. Um, so it's a really, really good gift. Um, so definitely recommend it for that if you want to get into it. Um, it still can cost a bit of money, but it's mainly sort of the beginning when you're trying to buy like the stand, the rope, the dowel, all of that type of thing. Um, and you're getting used to the knots and you're sort of going through rope to get to the point where you can create nice things. Um, you are going to spend money. So if you are looking for a hobby that's not going to cost you anything, Macrame is probably not the one for you. Maybe take up like painting or something. I don't know, definitely not resin because resin is even more expensive. So I just wanted to be quite honest about the cost of things. So that kind of brings me to supplies. Um, supplies, so I guess when I very first started, it was really difficult. And that was only two, three years ago. 
it was really hard in Australia to find decent quality, decent priced rope. Um, now it's much better. There are a couple of macrame artists who have started their own business and their rope is fantastic. So it's easier to get rope now. Ugh, the colors are just incredible. Like there's more and more every year. Um, so it is much easier than when I first started. But to be honest, I haven't really changed suppliers that much. So for beginners, what I would recommend is probably twisted rope. So there's lots of different types of rope and I'm gonna go through them all. But if you're a beginner, you want to use something that's quite forgiving. Cause when you're, the best thing about macrame is you can make mistakes. You know, it's not like a painting where if you screw it up, oh, you kind of ruin the canvas or you have to try and hide it. You can undo the knots. It's so easy to undo the knots. You can start again. It's a pain in the ass, but you can do it. So it's quite forgiving. Like it's a really good hobby um, to get into because yeah, you don't have to be perfect to start with. There are some ropes that are less forgiving though. Um, and so I wouldn't recommend using cotton string to start with. I would probably use cotton rope to start with um, simply because the more you knot and undo knots, the rope will start to fray. And when the rope frays, it just means that your knots aren't quite as defined in your pattern. So, you know, when you do a square knot, it might look more like a blob instead of a defined square knot um, with some of the softer string. Whereas with rope, yeah, it's more forgiving. You can undo it. It's a bit hardier. So this is what I started with, and it's definitely what I re would recommend, is a twisted cotton rope. Um, so this I buy from Industrial Yarns online. Their prices have gone up a bit, and they're not the cheapest around probably but they're the best color. So I've tried a couple of different other places and the color of the rope is a bit gray. Um, and I guess if you didn't know any better, you wouldn't really notice, but the color of this rope is much nicer. Um, it's creamier and I really like the quality of this one. Uh, this one is, and I'll put some designs up to sort of show you what I mean, but when the ends fray, it's like a nice wave and it's really pretty. And I really like using this rope comes in all different sizes, comes from like, I think this is three millimeter, it's four millimeter, five millimeter, so on and so forth. Um, I would start off with a three to four millimeter. No matter what rope you use, I'll probably start with a three to four millimeter. I love like five, six or sevens and eights um, when you're doing larger pieces, but to start with, go smaller. Um, it's cheaper and you get more rope when you purchase them because often rope bundles are sold per kilo so if you buy a one kilo of three millimeter you'll get more rope than if you buy um a one kilo of like a five millimeter or an eight millimeter um so yeah, to start with the more rope the better so the beginners twisted rope um from industrial yarns online the shipping is quite expensive that is probably one of the downsides to them um i think it's 22 or 25 dollars even if you just buy one reel um so Unfortunately, yeah, if you're buying a small amount, it does start to get a bit expensive, um, which is why I would recommend for the first couple of times you try and while you're practicing the knots, go to Bunnings and just buy some really shit cheap rope. doesn't matter what it is because you can throw it in the bin after. Just practice the knots and get used to the knots first. Um, see if you actually like macrame. See if you actually like it. If you hate sitting there and doing knots for four hours, then macrame is not the art for you. Um, so yeah, buy something cheap and shit to start with. Uh, have a practice, get used to the knots. You know, once you've got your square knot and your clove hitch knot down, we'll go through them. Um, then go and purchase your rope. Then once you know you really want to give it a crack and you enjoy it and you like it, then go and buy your rope. Okay, so I do actually have another a rope um, here. This one's from Industrial Yarns Online as well. Don't buy this one. I don't like it. I don't recommend it. I've had this roll for, I don't know, 12 months or more and I want, I'm not going to use it. I don't like it. Um, I had to buy it because I had to finish a different design off that I'd started and ran out of rope. Um, but I just, it's not nice. It's not a, so there are two different types of cotton string. There's like regular cotton string and then there's Lux cotton string. Lux cotton string is the shit. It is amazing to work with. I would say most artists these days work with Lux cotton string. It's so soft and so nice and the tassels and fringe you can create from it are beautiful. It's obviously more expensive, but it's worth it. Once you get used to your knots and once you're that confident in your knots and things like that, go to Lux Cotton String. You won't regret it. 
regular cotton string, it's like, it just doesn't fray nicely. It's a bit more like rigid. So you don't get like nice fringing. You get like dreadlocky type fringing. I don't know, it's just not nice. I just don't like it. I mean, if you had to, it's pretty cheap. So again, even this stuff to like practice on, this is good practice string, actually. This is good practice string. I don't think it makes particularly nice finished products. Um, mostly because of the fringing. It just... It's just not as nice. I just don't recommend it. I don't like it. Um, so Luxe Cotton String. This is unbelievably soft. And... Oh God, what have I done? Um... I'll try and do like a bit of a close up and a comparison of them because it's hard to do it without you feeling it. But this is so much softer than this string. So this is quite like coarse. And even I find when I use this shittier one, um, there's a lot of fluff that comes off it. Like I have to wear my glasses when I do it because I, as someone who is addicted to eyelash extensions, fluff is like my enemy and it's a bit of a nightmare. So that's just another downside to this one. It's heaps of fluff that comes off it. Whereas this one is beautiful and soft. It's so easy to work with. It feels so nice on your hands when you've been standing there for 10 hours, nodding. It's beautiful and soft. And um, it creates this really nice straight fringing. Um, and I'll show you some close-up photos of that. Um, but this is what, when you get into it and when you're experienced, this is what I recommend. Lux Cotton String. Um, so this I buy from a couple of different places, um, mainly just whoever's got the colour I want in stock, but I do like to sort of um, share my business around other small businesses. Uh, so there's two places mainly that I get them from, which is Mary Maker Studio and Jack Home Heart. So they're the two main places I buy my Lux Cotton String. They're both incredible. Um, they both have beautiful colours. I just find sometimes the mustard sells out super quick. <laughs> And that's one of the main colors I work with. So really, whoever has mustard in stock is who I go with. And I sort of chop and change between. So they're my two favorite for the Lux Cotton String. There are so many different colors now. There's more and more each year, and it's awesome. Um, this is Peacock Blue. That's mustard. I really like the cinnamon as well, which is like a rusty red kind of color. But their cream is all I work with now as well. So the last couple of pieces I've made have been in... Um, the cream Lux cotton string in the three millimeter and five millimeter, and I also have some eight millimeter. I'm very excited to work with. Once you get into macrame, you'll realize that like the thicker the string or wool or whatever it is you're working with, the more fun it can be because it's like big, bulky, tasselly designs. Um, so yeah, that is what I would recommend for the string. They're certainly the best prices, the best quality. Um, and the easiest to get in Australia. I know in, you know, America and Europe, there's so many more supplies and it seems to be a lot easier and there's um, just a lot more around. It's a whole lot cheaper. But in Australia, they're my recommendations. Um, and now the other one, which um, I work with and I, it's like a love-hate relationship with this one. Um, it's very expensive. So I just got this one from Bunnings, but it's $1.10 a meter. So it is like rope gold um and it's why oh you yeah, play oh my god oh. maybe i should have started this video by saying that don't take up macrame if you have cats also don't buy any of my pieces if you're allergic to cats because there's definitely cat hair in it and saliva that's how it is um so yeah braided bra this is braided rope um, again, you can get braided rope from a couple of different places, but I really like this one from Bunnings because it's quite thick um, and it's very solid. So do I have any pieces with this? No, okay, I've sold all of the pieces with this. Um, these, this is what I use when I want to do a woven macrame piece. Um, well, I'll put a photo up so you can see it and see what I'm talking about. So the pieces I've created with this, very structured, which means it's great for weaving through. Um, and the, the ends, which Chidi's just helped me untassel. Okay, you have that one. 
They, I love the fringe from this as well. Because it's braided, there's actually a lot of rope there. So when you um, fray the ends of it, it's like a real thick, beautiful, like textured um, tassel at the end. And I love it. The downside is it takes hours and hours and hours to undo the braiding. Um, so you've got to go through and you've got to sort of like... Uh, um, pull out the braided the braided rope pattern so that you get the fringe on the end so for example I think most of the pieces I've done with this probably took me at least four or five hours to undo the fringing at the end so it's a long time of just undoing fringing um, but I think it's worth it because I really love the look of it so this is if you wanted to try like a mixture of macrame and weaving, it's fantastic for that. It is quite hard on your hands actually because it's quite thick. Um, so when you're doing your knots, you've got to be quite strong. And I know um, after a couple of hours of it, yeah, my hands start to hurt. My muscles and arms start to hurt. But braided cotton rope is good for working with if you're doing a larger uh, pattern that you want more structure with it and if you want to weave through it. I probably wouldn't use this just for like a standard macrame piece where I was just doing knots and I wasn't weaving. It would look pretty cool because it's big. Um, and because the rope is so structured, you can see the knots really well. So maybe I would. Yeah, I really like it. But be prepared to spend hours and hours and hours unraveling that fringe. So yeah, they're the main types of rope I use. Um, okay, so supplies. Oh, um, dowel. Um, I should probably go into that as well. So the top of the top of the designs. Um, so I just use dowel from Bunnings primarily. Um, they come in different sizes. It just depends what size piece you're wanting to do. Um, and then I've got a little hand saw that I can sort of chop them down to whatever size I need. You can use whatever you want though. You can use driftwood and things like that. I started out that way. Thinking like, oh, it'd be so cool like to have driftwood on each piece and that'd be great. Um, but it's really goddamn hard to find driftwood. Particularly if you do start selling designs. Shipping driftwood is a nightmare. There are actually pieces I have that I have as pick up only because it's too hard to ship them. They'll break in the process, you know, if they've got pointy bits or thin bits on them and stuff like that. It's beautiful, but it's quite tricky um, if you're making it for anyone else. Um, so yeah, the dowel, it's cheap from Bunnings. It's so good. It comes in like all different shapes and sizes and lengths and stuff like that. And it's easy to cut down. Um, I do have some copper as well, but I haven't figured out how I'm going to cut that down. Um, but yeah, you, you can use whatever you want. You can get creative. Like there's oh, so many different designs out now where people are doing like triangles and circles and it's awesome I love it um triangles particularly but I haven't tried that yet so I better not recommend it all right uh the other thing I wanted to um just touch on as well is the stands so uh this is now the main stand that I use it's from Ikea um it was $20 when I bought it I'll have to check and see if it's still the same price if they still have it but it's just a clothes rack and it's adjustable at the size You know, it is easy to adjust. It's a little, probably a little bit more fiddly than some of the other designs, um, like what this was. Uh, but it's really sturdy, and that's why I like this one. It doesn't slip at all. Um, I found with this one, it did start to slip, um, particularly as it got a little bit older. So that's my favorite one to work with. Um, this one is what I started with, and this is only part of it, actually. Um, the other part is God knows where in our garage. It has two other parts that come up with a bar across um, and you just flip the sides out and adjust the bars up and down so you can adjust it to whatever height you want. It definitely was more versatile in terms of adjusting it to different heights but I did find because it just sort of flipped in it could slip a little bit so when I had a heavy design on top of it it would start to slip a little bit. But what I would recommend no matter what you buy definitely kept something that has a bar like this in the middle. I would have killed for someone to tell me this in the beginning when I first started because it's so much easier to measure your rope. Like you will be measuring thousands of meters of rope, okay, if this is something you want to continue to do. 
it is worth paying i don't care what they cost buy a stand that has this in the middle now it might not be the stand that you use all the time i actually find it easy to have a second one otherwise by the time you start getting a really big design and you've got a bar across and you're trying to pull string it sort of gets a bit messy so i like having a separate strong um heavy duty stand for the one i'm working on and then for the roof anything that has something like this in the middle um, that makes it really easy to sort of measure out your rope. Okay, particularly if you have cats, because I used to have to sit this on the floor and pull it and measure it, and the rope would be going everywhere, and it was just a nightmare. So um, I do recommend getting two. Okay. For um, actually putting your designs on there, I mean, you can do whatever you want. You can tie them up, but I find these little shower curtains. The best things ever so i literally pull this off my old shower um, it means that i can sort of take it off and on it's easier as i'm working on a design if i'm sort of working on this bit here you know i can unclip it and clip it onto a different part um, with the dowel in between so it's quite easy you know um, harder on small pieces easier on bigger pieces otherwise you can just use rope to tie it the problem with that is you've sort of got to undo it if you want to move it, um, whereas with this you can sort of unhook it, slide it along, change it, whatever you want to do with it. Um, so yeah, that's how I attach it. Attach it here, you can use hooks. Uh, I think a lot of artists do use hooks. I like these ones because they're, it's harder for it to slip out, uh, whereas some of the hooks I find that it can bounce off. So, shower hooks. Okay, so I also wanted to um, touch on planning. <laughs> This is something I'm really good and really bad at. I'll show you actually. Okay. So most of the time, I guess I don't really plan my macrame pieces unless I uh, have very limited rope. If I have really limited rope of say a certain color, then I will plan it out very carefully to make sure I have enough to finish a piece. But generally when I start a piece, I don't know, I just sort of have seen something I like or have finished a piece and wasn't quite happy with that so I wanted to try something else and sort of just like roll with it um, which means I'm very bad at planning but then even when I've tried to plan designs I just never stick to them so I'm a really really bad drawer <laughs> uh, this is so bad. but I like just scribble all of my patterns down and what I recommend is doing a better job than I do with this there were designs that I've created and you think, oh, I'm just going to create this and then, oh, cool, that's nice. All right, I put that up for sale. And then all of a sudden it's like the biggest seller and everyone wants one and you've got to create another six more and you didn't write your damn pattern down. And it's very stressful. It's very stressful. So write your pattern down. I can't tell you that enough. When you are starting out, write every single thing down. Write down how much rope you used, write how many you used, the pattern you did, even if it's just like a little shitty drawing, give yourself some idea of what you did because you just never know if it's gonna take off or not and you just, you think you'll remember and you don't, you never do. I think that all the time. I think, yeah, 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 I used three meters for that piece. I'll totally remember that and you don't. Oh God, worst memory. So that is probably one of my biggest tips is write everything down. And then on that topic, um, the other biggest question I get asked is how much rope do I need? So everyone always asks that when they're wanting to start out, you know, how much rope do I need for this piece? How much should you use for that piece? Um, how much should I get? I'm not quite sure. It's really hard. It's really hard to answer that. And again, um, the more you write down, the better you'll get at it. So it's a little bit of trial and error to start with. And I always say go extra. So you do use quite a lot of rope. Um, but when you start out, this is what I mean, get some shitty rope, practice a pattern and, you know, even if you just get some rope and start out, this is a square knot and this is all just square knots, that all is all that is, you know, start out, you cut yourself three meters of rope, do your square knots all the way down and see how far that gets you and make note of it. So, you know, if you use three meters of rope and okay, that gave me 20 centimeters of square knot, keep that in mind, write it down so you have some idea. Um, Cause then when you go to do larger pieces, 
you'll sort of know, all right, well, it has to be, you know, I want it to meet in the center. That's about 30 centimeters. It's going to have to be over three meters long. Let's go to four meters, maybe even four and a half or five meters. Um, always go extra. It can be wasteful and I hate that part, but Generally, you'll find you use the wasted rope, or wasted rope, um, anyway. So often I will cut like five meters or something and then halfway through I'll change my mind and it will end up being this tiny little, um, you know, bit and I've got three meters left at the end of it. But it doesn't matter because I will take that three meters and use it for um, my fringe, for tassels, for other pieces, maybe some smaller side pieces or something. Um, you can add rope in, but it's very difficult, especially depending on what pattern you're doing. If you're doing a square knot or something quite solid, it's not too bad. Um, oh, but there are some designs or some patterns you just can't. You just can't add rope in. It's so obvious that you've tried or that you've run out and things like that. So, yeah, I would say overestimate. But get an idea to start with when you're practicing. So practice, see how much rope you use. Um, and then you'll have a better idea and then honestly it's just trial and error you know unless you follow someone else's pattern you're really not going to know how much rope you use yeah there are still times when I sort of very much underestimate how much rope I'll need and it gets a little bit stressful when you're halfway through a design and you run out of rope so um, that is trial and error but my tip would be to always go more always go extra because um, you can use that extra rope for fringing or for something else or for tassels for a different design um, and honestly it's less hassle to waste a bit than it is to run out and have to change your design or have to try and add rope in which I hate doing okay okay if you've made it this far in the video and you're still with me then thank you so much um, hopefully that means you were interested in it <sighs> I know it wasn't a particularly exciting one today I tried to kind of keep it short I just wanted to do like a brief intro into macrame before I sort of started getting into techniques and knots and things like that. Um, so hopefully it was kind of helpful to some people, um, at least those in Australia who are looking at suppliers and where to get their ropes and things like that. Um, but stay tuned, I hopefully will have some more tutorials very soon, um, just on the beginner knots, intermediate knots, tension, patterns and things like that as well. So if it's something you're interested in, if you want more info on it, um, feel free to contact me at any time. You can leave a comment below um, or you can contact me on Instagram and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. But otherwise, stay tuned, hit subscribe, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.